Hi everyone, this is Lisa from Mythical Witchery. Today I'm doing a flip through and review of the Guardian of the Night Tarot by MJ Coulinane. I'm really excited about this deck. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. This is MJ's fourth deck. She's also done the Crow Tarot, the Urban Crow Oracle, and Grimalkin's Curious Cats. This particular deck was first available on Indiegogo in 2020, and she started it at the beginning of lockdown. So this was an amazing lockdown project. This deck was picked up by Hay House for the mass market in July of 2022. Its price is 30 US dollars or 40 Canadian. I bought it for 18 pounds on Amazon. I will give you the link to Amazon below. I'm not sponsored or paid by Hay House or by the author or artist for my reviews. I just want to give you information about the deck and my personal thoughts and opinions. So let's get started. MJ describes this deck as being full of nocturnal creatures who are accustomed to traveling through the darkness. These beautiful companions offer to you their talents, their natural ability to see, to create, to hunt while the rest of the world is asleep. So this box is about the size of the cards. It's two piece, sturdy box, no frills. It's got the little thumb sections to open. That's the inside of the box. And on the back, it says without darkness, there is no light. You can hear my cats in the background. <laughs> You'll get to know them. This is Jellybean and he's a little Devon Rex and Missy. From the creator of the Crow Tarot, this richly illustrated 78 card tarot deck and guidebook are reminders that there is always light to be found, even on the darkest of nights. Discover a vast menagerie of animal energy to guide you on your journey through the toughest times and discover wisdom and insight in those moments. This tarot deck is not a tool to banish the darkness, but an invitation to dream the divine dreams that emerge from the night and to find beauty wherever you are on your path. The wise creatures of this deck walk beside you and offer their individual gifts of wisdom and inspiration to your readings as the shining moon and flickering fireflies illuminate your path through the forest. The guidebook is the same size as the deck. It has 163 pages. It's not a color guidebook, but it does give quite extensive explanations of the cards. At the beginning, she's got her card spreads. She's got the single card draw, and then she does yes, no, and maybe, which is common with, I believe, all of her decks. So she lists the yes cards, the no cards, and the maybe cards. She's got the single card draw for advice and four card spread. Questions from the Major Arcana. And then she goes into the cards themselves. Now the card stock in these is a little bit thicker than most. They're 
oversized as well. They're larger than standard tarot cards. They're about three and a half by five inches or 88 by 127 millimeters. They've got a nice matte finish and there's no edging. I'll be edging this deck. I haven't decided what color yet. Now I love the fact that um, it's such a colorful deck. The backs are beautiful. There are edges or borders rather, uh, but they're not too bad. I don't mind them. So I've put these cards in order and let's have a look. So starting with the Fool, this is really quite different, isn't it? There's a wolf and he's chased the rabbit onto the ice and cracks are appearing on the ice underneath him. But he seems to have faith that the ice is going to hold him. The rabbit doesn't look too worried either, does he? So MJ says this card is about trusting, you know, trusting the universe. Traditionally, this card is about acting first and then thinking later. Um, and it's a card that can represent great adventures. You, you know, kind of let go of your expectations and start on a journey, um, knowing that no matter what the outcome is going to be, that something of value will be gained. And next we've got the Magician. just love that little raccoon. I'm just going to adjust my light a little bit so it's not shining too much on the cards. The High Priestess. That's quite different for a High Priestess, isn't it? The Empress. The Emperor. The Hierophant. sign there the bakery and cafe I just wonder what he's saying to those little mice giving them words of wisdom the lovers again very different for a lover's guard the scorpions the chariot interesting Badger and the chickens. Very interesting. Strength. That's a beautiful strength card. That mouse isn't the least bit afraid, is he? The hermit. Wow. <laughs> I'm an arachnophobic, but I appreciate spiders and how amazing they are. And this is really a gorgeous card. The Wheel of Fortune. That's really different, isn't it? It's gorgeous. This is a stunning deck. Justice. The 
hanged man. Death. Temperance. The devil. The tower. The star. That's gorgeous. The moon. I love that. This deck doesn't, really doesn't have the traditional imagery that we come to expect from a deck that's based on the Rider Waite Smith. You know, you do see some elements, but not too many. But still, I think the, the feeling of the card still comes across. The sun. Judgment. That he shed his skin. And the world. And now moving on to the minor arcana. Starting with the wands. And that's the Ace of Wands. The Two of Wands. Three of Wands. Four of Wands. Five of Wands. Six of Wands. Seven of Wands. Eight of Wands. Nine of Wands. I love that. That his quills are the wands here. The Ten of Wands. Looks like salmon. Jumping up. Page of Wands. Knight of Wands. Queen of Wands. And the King of Wands. I really love her art style. It's really different, but it works for me. And now moving on to the cups. Starting with the Ace of Cups. I'm just gonna move these out of the way so that they're not distracting from the cards. And the Two of Cups.
three of cups. Four of cups. An armadillo. Five of cups. So evocative, isn't it? The death moth. Six of cups. Seven of cups. Eight of cups. Nine of cups. Oh, how pretty. Ten of cups. Page of Cups. The Knight. And the Queen of Cups. Absolutely beautiful. And the King. And moving on to the swords now. With the Ace of Swords. Two of Swords. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's fantastic. The Three of Swords. It's like those are bones piercing the heart. Four of swords. Five of swords. Six of swords. Seven of Swords. Beautiful. Eight of Swords. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? There's all the owls in there. Nine of Swords. Wow, love that. of swords. The page of swords. Knight of swords. The queen. And finally, moving on to the Pentacles. And we have the Ace of Pentacles. Oh, that's beautiful. What a gorgeous card. The Two of Pentacles. I'm really partial to anything with dolphins or whales. I just love them. Three of Pentacles. Four of Pentacles. I love that fox. That's really beautiful. Five of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles. Seven of 
seven of pentacles. Eight of pentacles. That's fantastic with all the, what are they called? I can't remember what they're called, but where um, they deposit their, is this a wasp? I'm, I'm assuming this is a wasp and not a bee. That's what it looks like to me. Nine of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles. Page of Pentacles. And the Knight of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles. Oh. And the King of Pentacles. So let's have a look at how these shuffle. They're a bit big, so maybe a little bit harder to shuffle, especially if you've got small hands. And I don't have small hands, but I do still struggle with the larger decks. But I've got arthritis, so that's probably why. But there's always ways to do things. You don't have to do a standard bridge shuffle, you know, you can do an overhand shuffle if you like, or you can lay them out. But anyways, they're not too bad. You could get used to them. So it's time for my writing. I really do love this deck. I don't have any real complaints about it other than the fact that they are a little bit big and difficult to shuffle for me. Um, I, I would have loved to see the guidebook in color, but that's all right. It's still a good guidebook. I would have loved to see the cards edged, but that's okay too. So I will have to give this one four hearts out of five. So thanks for watching today. Tell me what you think of these cards. Do you love them? Do you dislike them? Do you own them? Are you planning to buy them? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. And also please hit like and subscribe so that we can continue to bring you more videos. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. Please share this video with other people that you think might like it. Opal, Whitney and I will continue to bring you witchy reviews and unboxings, pick a cards, live tarot and oracle readings, contests and giveaways, tarot reviews and flip throughs, guided meditations, discussions on fairies and the fae, mermaids, dragons and other mythical beings, general witchery and more. Bye for now.